If you've been following me throughout this course in AP Physics, congratulations, because we are at our last unit, electromagnetism, starting with a study of magnetic fields and forces. And when you see graphics like these, you get a strong hunch that we can control the laws of physics or pretty much do anything we want, like make perpetual motion machines. If only we can properly harness the power of magnetism. Not in such mundane ways as you see here, you might have seen in junior high, where you have iron filings that are tracing out the magnetic field lines. But let's get down to earth now and investigate magnetism. Magnetism, a very strange and odd yet fundamental force of nature. Now, consider electric forces. We know they act on electric charges. It doesn't matter if they're moving or stationary. Now, consider magnetic forces. All right? You're all familiar with magnets. They put forces on things. Well, it turns out they put forces on electric charges. That might be a surprise. The catch is this. The force is only there if the charge is moving. Now, that should raise some red flags. Wait a minute, you're telling me if here is an electric charge in a field, it just sits there in that magnetic field, but as soon as you start moving it, a force acts on it. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. So, like I said, it's a little bit odd. Well, consider how we represent magnetic fields. We have a bar magnet. Lines are drawn in the direction of force on a magnetic north pole. So, the, the magnetic field lines are drawn into the direction of force on a magnetic north pole, which is like the north pole of a compass needle. So here we have a graphic of that, north pole, south pole. And you'll notice the field lines are in the direction that the compass points. So that's a good example of that. So that's how we do it by convention. Now a magnetic field is a vector field since it has magnitude and direction at every point in space. And so I'm actually drawing the field lines here. These are the field lines showing the direction that the compass needle would point if you put a compass needle in that field. Okay, the symbol is B. What's the meaning? When we say magnetic field, or B in particular, it means the magnetic field intensity. Now, some of the characteristics of these forces on moving charges. When we do experiments, we discover the following. A whole bunch of proportionalities, relationships. So it's proportional to the charge itself. That's not too surprising. If magnetic forces act on moving charges, the more charge, the more force. It's also proportional to the size or intensity of the magnetic field. It's proportional to how fast the charge is moving. It's perpendicular to the B field. So we have a magnetic field, like in this direction here. And any force that this magnetic field is going to apply to a moving charge is going to be perpendicular to this direction. It's also perpendicular to the vector direction of the speed or the velocity. So perpendicular to the motion of the particle. So say the particle is coming in like this, the charged particle, the force is perpendicular to it. And it's proportional to the perpendicular part of the velocity that might seem to follow. Well, basically there's all these relationships all you really have to remember is uh, magnetic force is pretty much proportional to all the pertinent quantities and is perpendicular to all the pertinent quantities. If you just remember that, you pretty much got it. So, if the speed or motion is parallel of the, of the electric charge is parallel to the magnetic field, no magnetic force. Speaking of vector fields, I thought I'd just give you a few examples. Graphical examples of vector fields here. Here's one in two dimensions. Here's another one. Notice no magnetic field intensity right there. So it's showing the size and direction of the vector quantity everywhere in space. We can do it in three dimensions. There you go. 
or even more complex ones, color-coded. So there are some examples of vector fields. Let's now consider a charged particle, positive charge, moving in a B field. So here's the magnetic field, and this is the motion of the particle, and there it is. It's at angle phi. The motion is at angle phi with respect to the magnetic field. So this plane is the VB plane, the velocity magnetic field plane. We got the parallel part, we got the perpendicular part of the motion. Now we know that the parallel part does not contribute any force to the particle. So motion in the direction of the magnetic field, nada, no force. But perpendicular, if the motion of the positive charge is perpendicular, then the produces the maximum magnetic force that you can get for that situation. And here's the direction of the magnetic force. All right, it's up, it's perpendicular to the velocity, it's perpendicular to the magnetic field. That satisfies both. So just remember, it's perpendicular to the VB plane. If it's at some angle, then FB is Q, V perpendicular, B, or we, that's the same as QVB perpendicular, which is the perpendicular part of this, being this part, is equal to the size of this, sine of the angle. That gives you this component. <coughs> so FB is QV cross B. It's a cross product. That's the force on a positive test charge. If it's a negative charge, the direction is reversed. But now let's just clarify this cross product. Even though you should be familiar with it, here's B. Let's say that this is the direction of motion, and here's the angle between them. So if we want to do the cross of V and B, grab velocity with your right hand and swing it into B. So if you do that right now in your mind's eye, you should get your thumb pointing in this direction. However, if the motion was in the direction V prime, now the angle looks like this. So it's always the the angle is the, the angle that's always less than 180. So we're going to cross V into B with our right hand. Do that now. Swing it, and we get the force in the opposite direction. So that's how it works. Units for magnetic field. Well, look at the equation. B is F over Q V. So force is newtons, Q is coulombs, so there we go, newtons over coulombs, V is meters per second, so meters per second, and this little quantity seconds and coulombs. Remember that we just recently learned an amp is a coulomb per second, so that's inverse amp, so we got newtons over amp meter. So it appears as though magnetic field is fundamentally associated with current, and in fact it is. And this time, you know, we'd rather not have magnetic field have a time component to it, but in a sense it does, because this is the rate, current is the rate at which charge flows. How much charge flows past a given cross-sectional area in a certain amount of time. So Newton over amp meter, being so fundamental, gets its own term. Aren't we happy? It's called a Tesla. So that's the unit for magnetic field intensity. Now, this is a very large unit. So in practical situations, we often use the CGS, centimeter gram second unit, which is the Gauss. And a Gauss is 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. So you'll hear Gauss being used in reference to magnetic fields more so than you'll hear about Tesla.